headache is still pain, right? So we use Socrates. We use Socrates for headache. And I actually had two patients that came with a headache today. First one, well, let's just talk about one of them. First one, he had a headache that was frontal. Well, basically, it was more like face pain, but technically it's your head, so headache. But when we say headache, we tend to think like here, but it was like all here. So he had headache in this area. And it was more pronounced in the corner of the left eye and the neck here, as well as by the ear, but like more internally. If that makes so deep to the actual superficial ear. And like I said, headache is pain, so I use Socrates. But then there's also different neurological causes of headaches that you need to make sure you rule out. And it's always important to rule, to rule out the most sinister to the least sinister. So we think about stroke, subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is basically also a stroke. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is a cause of a hemorrhagic stroke. So yeah, we want to rule that out. We want to rule out GCS. We want to rule out meningitis. We want to rule out cluster headache, tension headache, migraine, and migraine with aura. We want to rule out all the different causes that of the headache. But in this case, one of the things that I made sure I asked was photophobia, neck stiffness. Neck stiffness can also photophobia and neck stiffness can both happen in meningitis and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. One of the important things to ask is to ask is whether the headache came on suddenly, like someone hitting them in the back of the head, like pow. In this case, he didn't have an occipital headache. But while I was a medical student, there was a time where someone had a subarachnoid hemorrhage and the pain wasn't actually coming from the back. So patients present atypically sometimes. Anyway, so yes, I asked about all of that to rule out meningitis, rule out, rule out subarachnoid. And then also we wanted to rule out GCS. So I asked him because he did have some like jaw pain and some query TMJ pain when he would bite. So I was just like to him, do you have pain in your jaw when you're chewing, when you're talking? And he says, yeah, just a little bit. I asked him what the pain in severity is out of 10. He said four to six, four, five, six out of 10. When it comes to differentials such as trigeminal neuralgia, that is something that patients that have, have literally felt like killing themselves. That's how bad the pain is. Like I said, people present atypically and pain tolerances is different, but trigeminal neuralgia is very, very painful. So to say that it's four, five or six out of 10, unlikely it's that. Another differential is Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy, notably, does not cause pain. If it causes pain and you think it's Bell's palsy, it's probably Ramsey Hunt syndrome. I didn't think it was that because he didn't have any ves vesicles, any rash. He said it, that it was more of like a throbby pain but it wasn't in the distribution of what we would say a tension headache is could have been a cluster headache cluster headache is another one that's really 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 painful so to say it's four five six out of ten unlikely cluster headache another thing that's important to do on examination is to touch press the temporal regions for gcs like a giant cell arteritis sometimes they can get tenderness in the temporal region so it's important to check that and also to ask about vision changes because you can get that curtain over your eyes in gcs so that's important to ask about he had ongoing vision symptoms so he didn't have anything that was new and acute so that's why it's always important to ask about things in context because if they're like oh i have back pain and you're thinking oh my gosh is it a triple a or is it pancreatitis like no they've had back pain for the last four years so it's not really relevant to right now so not to diminish anyone's back pain at all like every everyone's entitled to complain about what they want to complain about but what i mean is that in this context is it relevant to your differential so yeah then another thing about the headache that's important is to do like a full neuro exam that's why it's important to know how to do your cranial nerve exam i remember in med school i was like oh cranial nerve exam is so tedious to learn but i remember there was a time when i was a med school student and i say that like it was a century ago but i was literally less than a year ago but anyway there was a consultant that told me that he was able to pick up someone who had a motor neuron disease because all his cranial nerves was fine the only thing that he found was that he had fasciculation of his tongue and that was it and then in the end when they done tests he ended up having motor neuron disease he caught it early so yeah that's why it's important to not only know how to examine but also be like very attentive to what you could find like sometimes nystagmus can be so mild so yeah and yeah another thing which i should have discussed way earlier is stroke stroke what you can find in stroke is important to ask about symptoms of stroke weakness um drooping of the face slurred speech um it's important to ask about stuff like that and do a upper a lower motor neuron examination examine the power the tone the sensation reflexes all of that 
it's important to do that but yeah so that was how i took my headache history headache is pain so socrates and also make sure you rule out the most sinister to the least sinister